Buenos dias. Hola, soy Timoteo. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Tim Kutzmark, and I have the great pleasure of serving as minister here of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, California. La misión de la Iglesia Unitaria Universalista de Fresno es amar inclusivamente crecer, espiritualmente servir con gratitud y trabajar por la justicia. The mission of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno is to love inclusively, grow spiritually, serve gratefully, and work for justice. I'm so glad you're here with us this morning. Um, for our service. Uh, I'm going to begin in about three minutes, which means you have time right now to like us on Facebook if you haven't already done that. Also, um, would you share this live stream with all of your friends? Now, I know that's a daring thing to ask because in a way it's saying, I'm a Unitarian Universalist and I want you to know what my church talks about beliefs and practices. So, you know, you're putting yourself out there, but why not today? Why not today when what the world needs is more love and more justice? So be brave. Share this live stream with all of your friends. You never know who might discover Unitarian Universalism because of you. We'll see you in about three minutes and thank you for saying yes and doing that. Muchas gracias. See you in three minutes. Hola, buenos dias, good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno. 
I'm Ida Jones, and I serve gratefully as president of your Board of Trustees. As a church community, we believe many things. We believe in the inherent worth and dignity of all people. We believe that all forms of life on this planet are interconnected. We believe we must treat our planet as a living, fragile home and not as an object to exploit and destroy for our own immediate needs and gains. We believe our Unitarian Universalist faith calls us to work for justice. Justice is what love looks like in public. We believe black lives matter. We believe each and every black and brown life matters. We also believe that we are called to prioritize and protect the most vulnerable among us, which is why we believe that wearing masks in public and practicing social distancing is a moral imperative, especially as we see the shocking rise of infections and deaths in our country over the last week. We also believe that loving inclusively is a spiritual practice. Here at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, we welcome you, no matter your race, culture of origin, age, spiritual background, or religious beliefs. You are welcome if you're a lesbian, gay, trans, questioning, or non-binary. We welcome you no matter your differing abilities, the amount of money in your bank account, or your level of education. You are welcome with or without documentation. No human being is illegal at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno. Todos son bienvenidos aquí. Today's service theme is Feast of Losses. Some people in this country are beginning to see the results of the racism upon which this country was built. People of color, black and brown, have been shouting about racism and its costs, but until recently, many white people did not accept that the system that treated them with more favor had a cost of harm to many others. I'm going to briefly talk about loss, systemic loss and personal loss. The first loss is related to the rebellions and vigils that have occurred throughout the country and the world. One purpose of the rebellions was to bring about a substantial reform of policing practices. There have been numerous calls to defund the police by moving away from the slavery-initiated model of police as a state-sanctioned invasion force to a caring-based model of social support for people of color and others. Recently, that move movement suffered a substantial loss. Early yesterday, in Minnesota, the state where police killed Mr. George Floyd, the state legislature adjourned without agreeing on a single reform of policing practices. Not a single reform was sent to the Democratic governor. What a loss, but not a surprise for those who have been the victims of this country's racism and for those who have sought change. The second loss is a personal one. In October 2019, I suffered what has been the most painful, life-altering losses of my life. My oldest son, Kenneth, passed on to the mysteries of death. He was, as his youngest brother Kamali said, an artist at war for humanity's soul. Kenneth was born when I was in college a long time ago. He was 18 months old when I, as a single parent, moved to New York to attend law school. I used to joke with him that he decided he never wanted to be a lawyer because he'd seen what law school was like. Kenneth was loving, kind, intelligent, talented, and passionate about the world. He had a deep, infectious laugh. He was a UU in spirit. His loss has significantly altered my world. Reverend Tim and my church family have been an incredible support during this time. Tim provided significant emotional support. Lisa, the board vice president, freely accepted more responsibilities. The board members have been incredibly patient as I have needed time to both grieve and to work at the same time. 
Many members of my church family sent cards, attended, attended Kenneth's celebration of life service, and offered to support and to help in whatever way they could. This was a loss that will last a lifetime. If we were physically in our sanctuary, we would now shake hands and say, good morning. If you're watching with others, please do that now. If you're watching alone this morning, then it is my great joy to remind you that you aren't alone. I'm with you right now. We are all with you right now. Now I lovingly pass you to Reverend Tim as our service begins. Aida, thank you so much for that warm welcome and for your continued steady leadership of our congregation during these complex and changing times. So in the midst of our complexity, let the sound of the Tingsha, the ancient sound of the Tingsha, carry us to a place where that promise of peace, that hope and love is still possible. Good morning. Buenos dias. My name is Eva. Mi nombre es Eva. I welcome you this morning into this intimate space where my children and I pour our love to create home. I am delighted and honored to be able to reach you all this morning through the magnificent magic of technology. On Sunday mornings, all around the world, Unitarian Universalists light a flame in an open chalice as a symbol of our faith. For me, the chalice represents home, a greater home for all who inhabit Earth Goddess. Through the open chalice, Mother Earth, Madre Tierra, charges us with the responsibility and loving opportunity to live out our days in a meaningful and impactful way. For me, the flame represents passion and power from Pachamama as she cries out to us to birth the change we so desperately need. The flame sheds light, our each unique and individual light, where shadows have tainted Gaia's canvas. With an open heart that is willing to be transformed, we can and we will change pain and anguish into love and hope. If your spirit feels led, please join me this morning in lighting a candle or a chalice of your own. I return you to Reverend Tim's loving care as he introduces us to our song of praise and some hand dance moves. Muchas gracias, Eva. Thank you for lighting our chalice with such beautiful words. In a moment, we're going to sing our song of praise, We Rise. But it's more than just a song. There's a body dance or a hand dance that goes with it. So I'm going to just demonstrate it. Um, I'm not a singer. You know that. I sing in the key of F flat. Um, but uh, it's going to go like this. So uh, you can just follow along. And then in the actual singing, uh, Marina is going to uh, demonstrate uh, as we sing. So it's going to sound like this. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer, we're right here. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer, we're right here. We rise, humbly hearted, rise. We won't be divided, rise, with spirit to guide us, rise. That's it, our song of praise. So if you're not standing, go ahead and stand up and let's join Lorenzo and Marina 
we rise. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer, we're right here. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer. Soy Danny. Howdy, friends. Danny here. It's been a week since we were together last, and it's been quite a week. Big successes in the Supreme Court for the LGBTQIA plus community and dreamers who had DACA upheld and protected, but also continued violence against Black and Brown bodies and the continuing cycle of hate rhetoric and speech. Sometimes I don't know whether I should be crying for joy at the victories or weeping because my heart is so bruised from the violence. The thing about feelings is that they're tricky because they're so personal to each of us and What's important to remember is that whatever you're feeling is okay. If you're in a moment of joy and celebration, it's okay to feel that joy and celebration and to be happy. And if you're in a moment of sadness or loss, it's okay to feel the pain of that sadness and that loss. It's okay to be scared when the world is scary. It's okay to feel what you're feeling. I have a poem for you called It's All Right to Be Afraid by Lynn Jackson and Mike Poulter. It's all right to be afraid. It's all right to cry. If you never felt afraid, I would wonder why. There are shadows, there are strangers, there are problems, there are dangers. So why don't you pretend that fear is just a friend? It's all right to be afraid. That's what tears are for. When you lose a thing you love, you can let them pour. 
as all things come and go, all your tears will fade. In the middle of the night, just remember, it's all right to be afraid. It's all right to be afraid when you're all alone and the only thing you see is the great unknown. Just under, just look underneath the mask at the masquerade. If you're frightened by the sight, just remember it's all right to be afraid. So friends, do me a favor now. And if you think it's all right to be afraid, press an A for all right and afraid in the comment box now. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the poets and musicians who wrote the poem I just shared with you. They are the internationally acclaimed jazz and cabaret artist, Lynn Jackson and Mike Poulter. Lynn, Mike, and Reverend Tim have been friends for 35 years. They first met back in the day when Reverend Tim hosted a radio program in Boston. Lynn and Mike were frequent guests on Tim's show, performing live on the air gala cabaret concerts that Tim produced in Boston. Lynn Jackson and Mike Poulter are committed social justice activists. As a young woman, Lynn lived for a time in the basement of Unitarian Universalist Mother Church in Boston with other young people leading protests against the Vietnam War. From the very beginning of their association as husband and wife, as well as musical partners, Lynn and Mike have been deeply involved in humanitarian causes, generally involving children, often using their original songs on behalf of the kids. They're also co-founders of the Jazz is a Rainbow Project for underserved children, teaching the heritage of Black jazz composers, musicians, and singers while empowering children to use their own voices and bodies to bring the music alive in a new generation of singers and dancers and public jazz performances in schools, concert halls, and theaters. Now let's welcome Lynn and Mike. It's all right to be afraid It's all right to cry If you never felt afraid I would wonder why There are shadows There are strangers there are problems, there are dangers So why don't you pretend That fear is just a friend It's alright to be afraid That's what tears are for when you lose a thing you love You can let them pour And as all things come and go All your fears will fade In the middle of the night Just remember it's all right to be afraid It's all right to be afraid When you're all alone And the only thing you see Is the great unknown 
Just look underneath the mask at the masquerade. If you're frightened by the sight, just remember it's all right to be afraid. Accepting that permission from Lynn and Mike to, to be afraid when we need to be. I invite us to be brave enough, though, to imagine we are breathing in our fear, and we hold it for a moment, and then we transform it as we exhale into courage. Again, imagine breathing in the very thing we fear. We hold it for a moment, and then we transform it and breathe out courage into the world. And one more time, breathing in that which we fear, we hold it, we transform it in our heart, and breathe out courage into the world. As we continue breathing together this morning in this sanctuary, we create each week with our breath, with our beating human hearts, with our intention of connection and community. I have a question for us to breathe into. It comes from the spiritual teacher and writer, Oriah Mountain Dreamer. She asks us, I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow. If you have been opened up by life's betrayal or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. We allow our breath to carry us together into our time of sharing. If you have a personal joy, concern, sorrow, or gratitude that you'd like to share with the congregation this morning, just type that in the comment box. Um, if it is about someone else, though, be sure not to use their full last name in order to protect their privacy. And as we begin to share personally, we have to lift up that beyond the personal has been a collective period, days this week of pain and anger and also days of hope and unexpected joy, pain and anger at the continued killing of black citizens of this country. We mourn the loss of Rayshard Brooks, of 19-year-old Black Lives Matter activist Aluatoyan Zulao. We mourn the death of two black trans women, Rhea Milton and Dominique Remy Fells, and the hanging deaths of Robert Fuller and Malcolm Harsh. We need to call all of these deaths what they are. They are all lynchings. They are all hate crimes. And so we lift up the names of some of our forebears of the Black Civil Rights Movement. We lift up Medgar Evers, who was lynched. We lift up Emmett Till. And we reach into the not-too-distant past, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor, Natasha McKenna, Rakia Boyd, Kayla Moore, Miriam Carey, Corin Gaines, Tatiana Jefferson, Tanisha Anderson, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Richard Brooks, Aluatoyan Salah, Rhea Milton, Dominic Remy Fells, Robert Fuller, Malcolm Harsh. If you would like to join with me in honoring these lost lives and so many more, type the letters BLM 
for Black Lives Matter in the comment box. And even as we were enraged this week to hear of the newest names added to this centuries-old list of those who have been slaughtered, we had those moments of of joy, unexpected joy and happiness. We saw Confederate statues being ripped down. We saw local governments beginning to make changes in police practices. These changes coming because of the people in the streets shouting Black Lives Matter, shouting no more. And then we were blessed with two extraordinary events, the LGBTQIA plus community in Pride Month. The Supreme Court of the United States granted this community protection in terms of jobs under the law, now allowing them to be full citizens. We also had the Supreme Court declare for the time being that DACA is left in place, protecting those vulnerable, vulnerable young dreamers among us. And it was almost impossible to believe that on Thursday, a city council that in the past has been notorious in how it underfunds services to black and brown citizens of Fresno proclaimed Thursday, Black Lives Matter Day, and the city allowed Black Lives Matter to be painted on the street in front of City Hall in also rainbow colors, giving recognition to the LGBTQ community and also with colors of the trans liberation flag for transgendered individuals. Joy beyond all knowing. And speaking of the most vulnerable among us, we pause to lift up our beloveds, those in our congregation who are homebound, who are struggling with illness, who need our prayers and our circle of love and light to surround them. We lift up these names and we send special blessings to April B. And dear ones, I share the sad news that a longtime member of the church, Sue Strauss, has passed into the mysteries of death. Sue made that journey on Friday in the afternoon. We're holding her memory of her smiles, of her warmth, and of her constant presence in the congregation for decades and decades and decades. And knowing this is Father's Day, we want to take a moment to appreciate all those men who, in many different ways, uh, mentor, support, affirm, and uplift children. And of course, a special, special thoughts to fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, brothers, and uncles. Friday, collectively, the Black community in America celebrated Juneteenth, that day where we remember the final announcement of emancipation that was made to the last group of enslaved Texans and acknowledge across the country and here in Fresno, protests, rallies, vigils, and celebrations. It is our custom each Sunday to thank a specific group of people who are um, helping out in terms of the pandemic in these, these days. First, we always thank first responders and anyone working in the medical industry. But today, we want to give a special shout out to uh, store clerks and restaurant wait staff who themselves are all wearing masks and while they do their work. And they are being put at risk by people who are not wearing masks when they are ordering their food, who are not wearing masks when they are making their purchases. And uh, let's call it what this is. This is selfishness. It is cruelty that these folks who are waiting on us, that we don't give them the human decency 
of covering up our face. If you want to give a shout out to all of these store clerks and the restaurant wait staff, just press the number one in the comment box. For all that we've shared, for everything we hold in the depths of our own hearts, in our sacred privacy, and for all those people who have no one to remember them on this day, no one to speak their names with gentleness or kindness, we light our candle of community. By our remembering, may we and they be blessed. We light a second candle this morning, and as the flame burns, we remember now the over 455,000 citizens of the world who have lost their lives to COVID-19. As both candles burn, we sing Spirit of Life, Fuente de Amor. Will you please join Eva and me in the spirit of reflection, mindfulness, and prayer? Let us pray. O oh, spirit of life, fuente de amor, help us remember the strength that is within us. O oh, spirit of love, help us remember the resiliency that is within us. O oh, spirit of the winds and the mountains, help us remember there is something larger than this present moment. Spirit of the children, help us remember to laugh and to play and to feel deeply. Spirit of hope, help us remember. Spirit of hope, help us remember. Spirit of hope. Help us remember. 
Oh Espíritu de vida, fuente de amor, ayúdanos a recordar la fuerza de que hay dentro de nosotros. Oh Espíritu de amor, ayúdanos a recordar la resistencia que hay dentro de nosotros. Oh Espíritu de los vientos y las montañas, ayúdanos a recordar que hay algo más grande que este momento preciso. Espíritu de los niños, ayúdanos a recordar, reír, a jugar y a sentir profundamente. Espíritu de esperanza, ayúdanos a recordar. Espíritu de esperanza, ayúdanos a recordar. Espíritu de esperanza, ayúdanos a recordar.
Greetings, my name is Eva. Our human experience calls us all to come up against the array of emotions loss can bring. As it rushes through our bodies and it anchors in our hearts, it takes us to places we wish never to have visited. Painful places we never could have imagined even existed. I'm no different than anyone else who is partaking in this journey called life. I have experienced loss in variant degrees. From losing my first pet, my cat, when I was nine years old, to the sudden and painful loss of my dear friend and confidant, Kevin, and many more experiences there in between. I can cross all my T's and dot all my I's, and I will still experience loss. I can be intentional and present in all moments, taking in every breath, and I will still experience loss. Loss brings with it a sense of grief that does something to time. The grief manipulates time, creating the illusion that the sorrow will never lift, that it is in a permanent state, that it will never leave me. As Jamie Anderson so eloquently put it, and I quote, grief I've learned is really just love. It's all the love you want to give, but cannot. All of the unspent love gathers in the corners of your eyes, in the lump in your throat, and in the hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. End quote. All the grief born from loss turned me inward into my deepest fears. Some loss had my identity wrapped all around it. Some loss came too soon without a warning in sight. Other loss had me believing that the universe, source, had forgotten about me, doubting that I mattered. And through the despair that I was certain would never lift. Khalil Gibran comforts us in his poetic words from his book, The Prophet. And I quote, The deeper the sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. When you are sorrowful, look again at your heart. And you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. End quote. To know loss is to know love. I will continue to navigate loss in all its forms and choose to see the blessings and gifts embedded in the pain. I find solace in the promise that a new day awaits, that new beginnings are abundant, and while I surrender to the fact that loss is inevitable, with an open and willing heart, love is inevitable too. Now let us join our voices with Lorenzo's, How Can I Keep From Singing? My life goes on in endless song Above earth's lamentations I hear the real, though far off hymn That hails a new creation 
creation Through all the tumult and the strife I hear its music ringing It sounds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing? While though the tempest loudly roars, I hear the truth it liveth. And though the shadows round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble as they hear The bells of freedom ringing When friends rejoice both far and near How can I keep from singing? In prison cell and dungeon vile our thoughts to them are winging When friends by shame are undefiled How can I keep from singing? Our life flows on in endless song. Do you remember this one? To be where little cable cars climb halfway to the stars, the morning fog may chill the air. I don't care. I don't care. My love waits there in San Francisco, above the blue and windy sea when, when I come home to you, San Francisco, your golden sun will shine for me. The first time I saw San Francisco was early in my high school days. This was back in those last moments before the pandemic of AIDS engulfed the city and this country. To a tightly closeted Catholic boy, afraid of being found out, afraid of being tossed out by family and faith to those few days in San Francisco were spacious and liberating, were joy-filled, a brief glimpse into the, the possible future that I could have waiting for me, the, the possibility of becoming, well, me. Those streets, as I said, were filled with joy, freedom, and endless possibility. Until those days in San Francisco, I had no hopeful image to hold on to that could carry me through the isolation and fear of high school. It would be some 35 years later before I returned. It was five years ago, just after I arrived here in Fresno. I, I took the Amtrak north and marveled at the beauty of the blue and windy bay as I sped closer and closer to the city. I left the train and got on the bus that took me into the heart, the heart of San Francisco. But this time, 35 years later, the city felt so different. The joy and freedom that I had seen in the streets were replaced by pain. It was replaced by pain of people who had no place to call home except the streets, living there because the cost of living had grown higher and higher and higher. I saw someone shoot up with heroin right in front of the restaurant as I was eating breakfast. And I don't know if it was my imagination or my intuition, but everywhere I went, I felt ghosts. 
Everywhere I walk, the Castro, Union Square, Golden Gate Park, I felt ghosts. The ghosts of a generation of gay young men who lost their lives, often rejected by their parents, their family, lost their lives to the plague, the pandemic known as AIDS. These young men died because in the early days of the pandemic, the indifferent, greed-filled government in Washington refused to mobilize, refused to make the needed decisions. They refused to meet the plague with science, with preparation, and with compassion. Gay people were expendable and money could be spent on more acceptable people and things. To the government in Washington and to most people in America, these were lives that did not matter. I find it nearly impossible to spend time in San Francisco because my imagination or my intuition feels the presence of so many ghosts everywhere. Ricardo, Mark, Juancito, Stephen, Al, Cece, Perry, Tino, Kevin. So many ghosts. It's like that old song sings with lyrics by Irving Cajal. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. In that small cafe, the park across the way, the children's carousel, the chestnut trees, the wishing well, I'll be seeing you. If those words remind you of someone you're missing. Maybe type the letter S in the comment box for I'll be seeing you. Or if you feel so moved, maybe share their name with all of us so we can hold their remembrance with you. Today, we live together in a time of a new plague and pandemic. A plague that, in our country, disproportionately impacts a marginalized portion of society. In this country, primarily impacts persons of color, primarily those with black or brown skin. Many of these people are dead because the indifferent and greed-filled government in Washington refused in those early days of the pandemic, refused to make adequate preparation. They refused to mobilize. They refused to meet the plague with science, preparation, and compassion. Some people's lives are still expendable. To the government in Washington and to many people in this country and to many police departments in this country, black lives don't matter. Brown lives don't matter. Our current plague of coronavirus compounds a 400-year plague in this country known as white primacy culture. White primacy culture. A culture that enslaved and destroyed generations of Black, Brown, and Indigenous people. A culture that still has not removed the chains from the arms and legs of black, brown, and indigenous people. The loss of life to COVID-19 is staggering, and the rising rates of infection indicate that the worst days may be ahead of us. The losses created by the coronavirus are individual and unique to each one of us. Beyond loss of life and health, there's been loss of jobs, loss of income, loss of 
the ability to make ends meet, loss of our self-sufficiency as we visit food pantries in order to feed our family. There's been a loss of well-being, of opportunity, a sense of future, and for some of us, a real loss of hope. Poet Stanley Kunitz writes, How shall my heart be reconciled to this feast of losses? We've lost so much. We've lost freedom of movement. We've lost time that could have been spent with family. Because of the necessary masks, we've lost the simple joy of seeing someone smile in public. We've lost the opportunity to hold our brand new born great great grandchild. We've lost most of March, all of April, May, and June. We've lost the casual use of our hands as our hands have become instruments of contagion. We can't touch those outside our safety bubble. Will we ever be able to hold hands in church again? We've lost springtime in Woodward Park, Leonard Skinner at Save Mark Center, Fresno Grizzly Baseball Games, Roger Rockus Dinner Theater, Fresno Fres Yes Fest, the Fresno Philharmonic, the CSU Summer Arts Festival. If you've lost something that is meaningful to you, type the letter L in the comment box for loss or share in your own words what it is you've lost. How shall my heart be reconciled to this feast of losses? In his poem, The Layers, poet Stanley Kunitz answers his own question and offers us a path forward through our losses and into our unknown but possibility-infused future. He offers us a way to hold what we have lost while not becoming weighed down by it and immobile. He helps us see that we do not need to become lost in our fear and sorrow. Stanley Kunitz writes, I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind, as I am compelled to look before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I have made myself a tribe out of my affections, and my affections are scattered. How shall my heart be reconciled to its feast of losses? In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way bitterly stings my face. Yet, I turn. I turn, exulting somewhat, with my will intact to go on. Wherever I need to go and every stone on the road precious to me. In my hardest night, when the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus clouded voice directed me, live in the layers, not in the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book 
of transformation is already written. I am not done with my changes. We are not done with our changes. My best friend Michael recently lost his mother, not because of COVID-19, but in the time of COVID-19. I asked him to share his experience of loss and how he is learning to live on the layers and not the litters, how he is deciphering that next chapter in his book of transformations. Michael writes, my mother Marion passed away recently from old age. She was quite old, but that doesn't matter. She's my mother, the most important person in my life. In her final years, she lived in a nursing home, dealing with the so-called maladies of age, loss of eyesight, mobility, memory. My mother has passed away and I feel lost. That response is typical, especially in ordinary times, but these are not ordinary times. What happened was cruel. Not that at age 95, my mother passed away. There's nothing surprising about that. What was cruel was that her passing happened in a pandemic. And because of that pandemic, we were unable to visit during the last two months of her life. We were not able to all be with her till the end. In the way that we wanted to in the way we would have been. And of course, her memorial has been delayed, which also feels cruel. Both were necessary. I know that, but that doesn't change how I feel. Michael continues. My friend, teacher, and mentor for 35 years, Karen, suggested that I write about my mom as a way to honor her. I like that idea. Karen, too, was always there for me with support and good ideas. Another mother figure. In another cruel twist, Karen died this week. Again, from old age. We spoke on the phone Sunday, but we never had a chance for that last visit. Amazingly, I was given one with my mom the afternoon before she passed, when the nursing home gave me permission to come on the premises. Our last visit was truly special, poignant. I was the one child who was able to visit her for several hours on the afternoon before she died. She never once took her eyes off me. And she listened intently as she heard each of her daughter's voices on the phone, not wanting to miss a word. Like every visit, it was full of love. Music I sang to her. Warmth appreciation, and connection. But it was also ordinary. Ordinary because it was full of all those things that were always there. And that sense of the ordinary, the familiar, reminded me that that love, that connection that she had for us and we for her, never ends. And so the last visit was just one moment in something continuous, something unlimited, something eternal. As with every visit, it was hard to leave. But in truth, I didn't. We didn't. And she'll never ever leave us. Neither lady has left. Both will remain.
in my heart. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen. To be where little cable cars Climb halfway to the stars The morning fog may chill the air I don't care Good morning and welcome. I'm Sam Sutler. It's been my honor to have been elected twice as president of your board of trustees. Allow me now to share how the church has impacted and changed my life and why I'm happy to make my financial contributions to our church. 65 years ago, I joined my first UU church in Berkeley, California. In the years since, as my job has moved us and me and my family around nine times to each new location, each time I made the effort to make contact with the local UU church. 
Those connections kept me and my family grounded in our religion and provided us continuity in our spiritual quest. And in addition, the added benefit was that many huge friendships were established. So much of my life has changed over the years, but one rock-solid entity has been my love and support of the UU Church and of our seven UU principles. During this time of isolation, we all yearn for connections with old friends in the church. We long to see their faces and hear their voices. We value new forms of connecting through Facebook and Zoom and appreciate that our minister and his excellent staff and volunteers have been able to produce this Sunday service and make it easy for us, even us elders, to join Zoom meetings. Thank you, Reverend Tim. I suggest to you now, in order to keep our church open and operating and thriving, and ministering to the needs of our congregation and our community, in support of our pride community, in our Black Lives Matter commitment, now is the time for us to show our support and literally put our money where our heart is. If you are already pledging, please continue to do so. And if you can, add to your pledge just a little each week. It would be greatly appreciated. If you are not a pledging member, but benefit from these services and are connecting with the huge church and principles and call for justice, now would be a time to lend your financial support too. For all those pledging members who have been making an additional contribution each week, I thank you. The Board of Trustees, thank you. And Reverend Tim, thanks you. For those who haven't yet made a special contribution, I personally invite you to do that this morning. And you know, there are several ways you can make your offering, including cash app, PayPal, credit card, or text. A slide will appear with all the information in just a moment. But first, in the spirit of grateful generosity, will you please join me in saying our words of offering? If not us, then who? If not open the hearts, then what? If not now, then when? If not here, then where? If not generously, then how? If not us, then who? Thank you for saying yes, and goodbye, and I'll see you again soon. Howdy, friends. I'm back with a reveal of Reverend Tim's Sunday socks. Now, it was a summer food showdown between the Fresno steak corn, the kosher hot dogs with mustard, and the freshly sliced watermelons. But in the end, the winner was a tie between Fresno steak corn and freshly sliced watermelon. So you can insert your own corny watermelon joke there as you give it up for Reverend Tim's Sunday socks. Now, we do have a few other reminders. Right after service, as always, we are hosting Social Hour in Zoom. What's special today is that kids also have their own social hour. So while the adult link will post right after the service, I'm going to put the link for the kids service in the comments below. You will have to go through a waiting room, so make sure you put your name in the Zoom so I know who you are in order to let you in. We've answered the call of the Interfaith Alliance to help feed Fresno. If you want to help, you can email the office at uufresno.org. Last but not least, next week we will continue to hold our vigils for in support of the Movement for Black Lives at 7 o'clock on Friday. 
If you can't come stand with us in solidarity, we ask that you drive by, give us a little honk honk of support, or light a candle at home. Thank you. Greetings one more time, and welcome back to my home. My name is Eva, and I serve gratefully on the Worship Associate team. As our new reality began to set in, and a world pandemic forced us to give up meaningful in-person gatherings, many of us, myself included, felt like we had lost something so precious and so dear to our hearts. But this morning, my soul is filled with so much gratitude for everyone who answered the call of need and brought forth their creative spirits and delivered this sacred virtual church gathering. Muchas gracias. As we prepare to end our service and enter into this warm afternoon, Please join us in our chalice extinguishing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en el corazón. My deepest gratitude this morning for holding space with me. I hope you find yourself here next week. Much love and much peace. Until next time. Muchas gracias, Eva. Thank you for joining us to help lead worship this morning. Um, well, dear ones, we have come to the end of a, another service, another time of being together in community and connection and weaving ever deeper the, the bonds of love that hold us all during this time of pandemic and social uprising, this time of great loss, and this time of potential gain. Let's take our hands, place them on our hearts. Go now in peace. May you leave this place knowing you are good and knowing you are loved. Take your love, share it with the world. Stay safe until we meet again. And may the long time sun shine upon you, all love surrounds you, and that pure light that is within you guide your way on. Blessed be. Amen. May we have faith. Shalom and assalamu alaikum.